Google and Amazon both just expanded their domain registration uh, capabilities with uh, becoming registrars themselves. Google Domains is currently an invite only, and Amazon expanded their Route 53 to incl include domain registration. That leverages that Route 53 backend, so I figured I'd give a little overview of the domain registration websites. We'll start with Google Domains, which is currently invite only, and I just got my invite code, so I figured we could walk through it and see what they have to offer. Starting with the features of Google Domains, they summarize it pretty quickly, and it's a lot less uh, busy of a website compared to what you see at GoDaddy, but usually most websites are. Um, some of the big features include private registration that's built into the cost automatically. You get 100 email aliases using that domain that you register with them. Of course, they can do domain forwarding and subdomains, and it utilizes Google's infrastructure. No real word on if they use Anycast or any other uh, DNS features. I did see in the help that they support DNSSEC, um, but we'll have to get some of the metrics on uh, how quickly they respond to DNS lookups. And they do have a limit of 10 million resolutions per year for each domain. And typically the cost of um, a domain with Google is about $12 can differ a little bit depending on what top-level domain you go with. But using this infrastructure, Google will finally be providing the authoritative answer for domains where it's the registrar. I know this caused some confusion before with uh, Google's announcement of public DNS, where Google just provided the infrastructure for the lookups. This time, Google will actually be answering and should see a speed-up of some domains if they're using a uh, cheap registrars currently. Well that's uh, the features so I'm gonna head into manage my domains and here you can see it's a very simple interface uh, and automatically logged in with my Google account where I was already logged in since I already had that invite code it let me in otherwise it would have prompted for that code that came by email uh, but o overall it just gives you a simple uh, table to watch what your domains are doing and um, you can list it here. So the options are to either create a new domain or transfer a domain in. I don't know if I'm really in the market for a new domain but that takes you back to the homepage search. Let's try one out. We'll just see um, come up with something here. So it says it's available, one year costs $12, and every year after that, and that's with the built-in uh, privacy. So $12 is actually uh, a lower price point with built-in privacy than Hover and Gandhi, uh, which have both been pretty much fan favorites since um, GoDaddy supported SOPA and has a horrible website and other things like that. Uh, but it's pretty simple. You would just choose a website here or choose a domain here and what depending on what end what generic top level device you want and it looks like they are getting into the the expanded generic top level domains um, with dot photography and dot technology that one might not be a bad one for me um, the other option is to transfer in a domain so let's say I wanted to transfer 404 tech support.com to have Google as the registrar. I don't think I'll actually go through the process today <laughs> on, vi on video, uh, but we can see the steps that are involved. So currently, uh, 404 tech supports registered with two cows and it's locked. So I'm going to have to unlock it in order to transfer it over. And they also want the who is information switched. To public whereas it's currently private. Not a big fan of this step of having to make it public because it's just another window of opportunity for uh, crawlers and spammers to get that information. Um, so I'm not quite sure why you have to make it public during the transfer and you can't just manually enter it in but both uh, Google and 
Amazon's Route 53 require that switch to public. Maybe it's a standard domain registrar process. Uh, the next step after getting your domain configured is to get the authorization code, which your current registrar would provide as just part of the domain listing. Paste that in there. Basically says you're handling both ends of the deal. Otherwise, you'd be providing that authorization code to uh, whoever bought the domain from you or if you're handing it off to somebody. And then they'll automatically pick up um, where your records are pointing to. And you can either use Google's name servers, which I'd be very interested to see um, how it performs. Otherwise, uh, you could use your existing name servers. Like right now, I'm using a um, external DNS service called DNS Made Easy. It's pretty fair priced. It's uh, actually been one of the top performing uh, external DNS providers out there for the past few months and it's 39 bucks a year which isn't too bad um, it does have some limits but it's a little bit higher than that uh, 1 million per year or was it 10 million per year per domain um, after you get all the information entered for setting up your domain as soon as it transfers you just go through with the uh, transfer process and you'll have to add this to your cart which you could check out through uh, Google Wallet. And since most are $12, you can just use your credit card, register that with Google Wallet, and check out. But I think that's uh, basically it for Google Domains. It's pretty straightforward, very simple. They've got some great highlights of their features, and the help is pretty... Uh, pretty on par for a lot of the questions you're going to have with whether or not you should trust a Google beta project since a lot of those tend to get sunset with uh, still plenty of fans using them. Uh, but check out the help if you have any questions. Uh, since it is in beta they are accepting feedback. be interesting to see how the service improves and changes as it approaches a final release. So we'll switch over to uh, the AD AWS, Amazon Web Services, Route 53. Currently this has been an external DNS provider, similar to uh, DNS Made Easy. I went with DNS Made Easy because it was um, kind of a flat price uh, bulk lookups, whereas Route 53 may have actually been a better fit um, just because it scales well, and if your site's smaller, then you're going to pay less because you're not using that full quota um, but recently just last week Amazon announced uh, dom they would act as a domain registrar so if you scroll down here to domain registration you can go ahead and get started and similar to Google they have a very simple table explaining your domains which is great it uh, doesn't need to be much more but somehow GoDaddy's cluttered it up uh, and again, your options are pretty simple. You will either register a new domain or transfer a domain in. And uh, this one is has a much more expanded list of the new generic top-level domains that you can get. And you can see .coms cost $12 here as well, so Amazon and Google are right on par with the price point. Some other ones, though, uh, jump up fairly quickly. .jp will cost $100 a year. And then you can scroll through and see some of the other options. Uh, .farm, .florist, .guitars, .link. Let's go with .link. It's only 10 bucks. So if we add in 404 tech support .link, maybe I'll just use this as a redirect, see if it's available. Yep, it's available. It's also available for many other domains. Oh, this one's, this is good. It's <laughs> not available for anybody else to buy. And you just simply add to cart. And you can see our shopping cart in brief here. And the pricing details for 
AWS Route 53, which is what it's going to be built on. I mean, if you're, I wouldn't use Google as a registrar if you're not going to also take advantage of Route 53 for your DNS lookups. Now, they're a little bit more detailed than uh, Amazon because they've had to make that argument of using their cloud services um, with their GeoDNS and hopefully speeding up the whole DNS lookup process for uh, your site visitors around the world. So then the other option besides um, adding a do new domain is transferring the domain. So if I was to decide to transfer 404 tech support to here, it would cost me $12 for the year. And we'll just check its availability. And it's currently um, registered, registered somewhere else, and it gives me some of the steps that are going to have to take, which is the exact same as what Google was presenting. Disable the domain privacy, uh, unlock it, make sure the contact information is good, one, which it can get once the privacy is disabled, and get the authorization code. It's in a little bit d different order, but it's not a bad summary. One thing I did like about the uh, Google domains when you were transferring a domain, it tells you uh, it's going to add an extra year to the registration and uh, and the date that that will expire. So for here, 404techsupport.com will be registered until October 14, 2016. So it's tacking on another year. And so I'm not losing any time by transferring immediately instead of waiting for that domain to nearly expire and getting into crunch time to transfer it over. Some registrars have not been the most responsive. Then you can continue through, get your authorization code and fill all this stuff out. And then just be a simple checkout process because Amazon certainly got that process down. But I think that's about it for uh, checking out the new registrars from big names like Amazon and Google. Between them and Hover and Gandhi, uh, do you have a favorite? And which one are you excited about checking out? Thanks.